John, so so good to meet you, man. Uh, really pumped to have you on. Let's just hop right into it. Uh, I think we were talking about what was the best thing we wanted to talk about. And uh, before we really dive in, we need to set the stage. Give us a little background on the John Dolan career. I was introduced to you, I'll tell you in a funny way, by a lady named Sam Blake. If you know her, awesome photographer yeah. out of New York City. Yeah. Uh, and I also got second approval that you're awesome from Emily White earlier this morning. Uh, oh, fantastic. Yeah, so some good people. But in the wedding photography world, you know, there's this idea, you know, that, you know, everything's a level up. And you, you eventually say, okay, I would love to make $5,000 at a wedding. I'd love to make $10,000 at a wedding. I talked to Sam and our big thing was like, hey, if you're in the right niche, you could make even more than that. And I was like, oh, cool, awesome. And then she's like, you should talk to John Dolan. And I don't want to make this specifically about money, but I love to open up the capacity for wedding photographers who are dreaming of what it can possibly be. And that's how I was introduced to you as a $40,000 wedding guy. <laughs> <laughs> She didn't even mention the fun stuff, but that's all she said. She was just like, yeah, you should check out his stuff. <laughs> well, I'm going to flip this totally on its head. Do it. Because I think there's a myth about the whole growth thing, the luxury thing. And I think it's a really tricky thing for people to get in their heads. Yeah. I, think, um, I think the more interesting story is that I've been doing it for 30 years. Yeah. And for the first 20 years, I was just you know, $2,000, $5,000. <laughs> the the big game hunting that I'm doing now is because I'm at a, you know, sort of a, a senior part of my career. And it's a very, I have, I feel like I have a finite number of weddings in me. Mm, okay. So I, I imagine this kind of bowl of chips and there's a finite number of chips left in that bowl. <laughs> so each wedding I do really has to be exquisite it has to be full of um, trust between the client and myself yeah. so when my clients trust me then i aim incredibly high i i am not i'm not playing it safe yeah. i'm not playing it by the book i stay away from cliches and the expected i go for it so it's a whole different it's kind of a live performance yeah. almost like a trapeze artist sort of thing um, but i think it's more important for uh, photographers out there to to gain their footing slowly and and think about the long game which is mm. how do you build a career that you're proud of and you don't burn out i i meet a lot of photographers who've gotten great success really quickly yeah and they're just crushing it and they're doing 30 30 a year and then i see them three years later and they are just exhausted mm. they can't remember their last bride's name <clears throat> yeah excuse me um so you know it, when i look back on the last 30 years of doing this i see that it was incredibly uncool thing to do in the 90s and then <laughs> a small group of us made it an acceptable art form yeah and then the 5d came out in 2005 and then <clears throat> it opened the floodgates right so you know that's a really funny transition that yeah it was it was a low class thing to do when I was starting out in New York City. Sure, um, it was just the most uncool thing you could say you're doing at a photographer gathering. Mm -hmm. And then ten years later, it it it's it's open for everybody, and it's uh, it's a very welcoming community. It's a very supportive community. I um, mean, you mentioned Sam yeah. and Emily. It, there's two million weddings a year. Yeah, <clears throat> if I need ten weddings which is my goal every year, 10 really cool yeah. people who get what I do, yeah. then um, it's a whole different business model that I don't think everybody recognizes. Like, we're not uh, TGI Fridays. I'm not TGI Fridays. Yeah. I'm a small <clears throat> restaurant that's hard to find, not easy to get into. It, uh, you know, that you don't know what the chef's gonna cook that night, mm. but it's sort of an adventure. Yeah. And, and when I teach, I try to get people to start thinking about, you know, what what brand, what, um, I mean, in a funny way, I'm almost like a private chef yeah. or a private something. I'm not, I'm not a vendor. I'm somebody, 
I'm let into the most intimate part of somebody's house, yep. brought up into their bedroom. Yeah. <laughs> I see the you know, the last wedding I went to, the mother walked out of the shower with a towel around her and said, Oh hey John. Yeah. Fire away, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. Which was just magnificent. Yeah. Um, because it's all part of the same ethos that uh, when I uh, when I shoot your wedding, I don't have a plan. I, I, I don't prepare. I'm, I'm so deeply prepared from all my years of doing magazine work yeah. and storytelling that it's, it's the most effortless job because there's so much packed in a day. I don't have to say a word. You know, yeah. I do. I chat with people. I have a beer. I sit down with guests. Yeah. But I don't have to direct, which mm. is makes it really fun. That's awesome. That's so cool. Yeah, I love that. I think, uh, and if anything too, somebody who's been doing it for 20, 30 years, you know, and having this idea of like the finite weddings is, we gotta make it count, you know? And, you know, it's, exactly. it's uh, yeah, I definitely love the private chef analogy where, you know, and you can tell, you know, where clients that just trust you and they say, okay, yeah, like we hired a pro. I think, I think that's one thing, have you seen this? in change from the earlier days to where ironically the most expensive, you know, I can say this for me, my highest budget weddings might not be that $40,000 range, but my, I say my five digit couples, they're the most easy going. They're the most chill. You know, they, they just say, Adam, you do your thing, whatever you think is best. That's, that's the best case. And it, I, I, I think if you meet people in person whenever you can, or have some sort of personal connection, yeah, then you gain that trust and you, <clears throat> I also, I also tend to um, make sure that it's a right match. If I get a feeling that it's not a right match, I send the wedding on to other friends or, yeah. or uh, so I think it's, it's super important that you have a, an honest connection with people. Mm. Um, but I, I do think that um, we have to really have to look at weddings in a new way and and be careful not to put the money first yeah. in, in my book the the money follows the art it's mm. not the other way around definitely I, I think so many people are so strong on the commerce part of their balance sheet but not the art mm. and I think that you know the best that you could do is work on your on your distinct voice and uh, and really you know I think uh, like the imposter syndrome that people talk about, I think if you feel imposter syndrome, then it means you got work to do. Yeah, and it's not a bad thing. It's a it's a message to yourself saying, uh, "I need to do some push ups and get in shape." Yeah, as I can see, you are seriously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm you know I'm just a I'm good to have in cold weather. I'm a, a cozy grizzly bear. So um, yeah, I, that's the thing too. It's. Um, you know, I, I totally lost what we were, we were just talking about because you mentioned well, me being a well, chick. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's really that thing of, do you have two or three friends mm. who will tell you the absolute truth yeah. and not just say, man, you crushed it or I love your work. Or, you need somebody to say, dude, anybody could take that picture. Yeah. Um, or you're you're resting on your last wedding yeah. or you're, you're just, it's just, you're, you're making cliche pictures. So I think it's really good. I, I was really lucky to have two colleagues for 15 years. We shared an office and we pushed each other in the 90s. We were all in the in the first issues of Martha Stewart. That's awesome. We were kind of, you know, setting the tone for that uh, for the industry. And we were we weren't settling for anything. Mm. And, and we'd show each other pictures after the wedding and be like, eh, you kind of, you know, you kind of rested that on that one. Yeah. And, so I think it's I think you need to find those people around you who will tell you the honest truth and uh, and push you somewhere else. Yeah, there's nothing like, you know, I know the little bit of photography stuff I did in college, you know, whether it's collaborative or even competitive, like you can make better stuff that is greater than the sum of your parts when you have either collaborative or competition, you know, and uh, I, I miss that. I think a lot of photographers, but ironically, I sense a theme in both Sam and Emily, these kind of high-end luxury photographers and you as well, where photographers 
we're successful on the balance sheet. That's the goal, right? We say, all right, I just want to be able to have a, a good life, work. And I think it's not terrible, right? It is a privilege that we get to make money from our art and we like that. But then the next thing is like, okay, well, what if we could turn up the dial or turn the screw on the art and say, what if we could do it a little bit better, you know? And I think it scares photographers because it scares the balance sheet. They say, oh, well, if I'm going to retrain my brain or if I'm going to be moment based or portrait based or editorial or French or whatever, uh, they get scared. But, you know, fortune favors the bolt, you know? <laughs> exactly. And, and, and you got to take risks and you got to. Uh, you can't rest on on what's been successful in the past. Mm. Um, it's it's very tricky for each wedding to be fresh because it follows the same script. Sure, yeah. Bride gets dressed, bride walks down the aisle, bride dances. But if you can't uh, reinterpret each wedding uh, based on what's happening on that specific day, I mean, that's what's so interesting that we know what's going to happen. Yeah. We know where to stand. We know... Um, but I, I I tend to try to um, mess myself up a little bit on each wedding. I, you know, I I don't scout. I don't um, do walkthroughs. Yeah. For me, it doesn't exist until those two people are together. Mm-hmm. And uh, I mean, the one thing I do that maybe is a little different is that I love doing engagement pictures, but I do them for free just to. I say, let's just meet in New York and have a glass of wine, walk around a little bit, yeah. you know, shoot a couple of rolls of film. Totally. I don't do big fancy setups, but I, in those, <clears throat> sorry about my throat. That's there. all good. Uh, it, when I meet people, when I spend time with them for an engagement session, I'm making notes on how they are together, yeah. uh, who's awkward. Uh, I love to lean into the awkwardness. Mm. And I love to um, give them a sense of what my camera's like and, you know, how I move. Yeah. And I make it really painless and sort of undermine the, you know, the overly sentimental engagement picture. I I think it's, I, I mean, one of my big messages to photographers is there's a lot of room out there for somebody to do something different. Mm. And there's permission, there, you should feel permission to, uh to sort of um, crush your heroes and and break out, you know, a little punk attitude, just sort of um, try something completely different. Do I've had some students who've done weddings for free to shake out the staleness of the photography yeah. and just say, I'll shoot your wedding if I can do whatever I want and see what that gets you. Mm. That kind of, that kind of uh, giving yourself permission to experiment, I think is really important. I think... Social media does not encourage that. Yeah, <laughs> you know it freaks people out. If I, I mean, my Instagram feed is intentionally kind of uh, scattered because I'm trying to message to photographers saying it's all part of it. Yeah, it, you know, my life is part of it. it my photography is part of my life, and uh, there's not just one thing that I want to repeat every weekend yeah no 100 percent. i think uh yeah it's probably weird i i I know for me i've this is probably uh upset you i have never shot a frame of film that's kind of my you know (laughs) i've never been in a dark room i i am the the cd versus the vinyl uh you know photographer um but you know last year i you know we shot our millionth photo you know and i was like okay we've got we've got some time in here and you know, one of the things I, I think about is just like the back in the day, pre-internet, you knew 10 bands, 10 photographers, right? You know, uh, a very small number. You'd go and they were all doing something different. You went you went to each of their shows and you're like, wow, that was amazing. Or you went to a gallery, maybe. Uh, and maybe that gallery photographer also shot weddings, right? Because weddings are not that cool. But it was like, all right, I got to make some cash. And, you know, things like Instagram although inspirational right the inspiration is good but it's like it's um it's not always true you know I, I, the same way that we have friends that maybe uh are fighting the uh the fitness inspiration right or like hey not everybody has a perfect body and six pack abs or yeah. has it together we have to do that in the wedding world and not just say hey it's okay that your wedding didn't look like this but also lean into that lean into whatever it is 
Exactly. And I think I think musicians offer a really good model for careers. You know, it's Willie Nelson's birthday. I mean, look at somebody who's done that or blues musicians or jazz guys or, you know, um, I mean, Joni Mitchell's my all time favorite. And she <laughs> would change each album. Yeah completely and reinvent herself and critics or fans would th- throw their hands up and say, what, why don't you play the last one? Um, so I, th- I think there's freedom out there. Um, it, and it's, it's, I understand the need to pay rent, but I also know that for longevity, you better feed your soul mm. regularly. Yeah. And, and that's the biggest thing. It's, there's a whirlwind out there, and you know I kind of um, repel against those, like that podcast, how they how they built this. Oh yeah, you know, yeah. I, I hear that, and I see that it's selling this idea of the American success story mm-hmm. in less than an hour. Is, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I, in my experience, you know, I've had some really great, big profile successes. Sure. And then I'll wake up the next day or Monday morning. I'll wake up and be like, yep, nothing. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, (laughs) You know, you go up a small bit. You go up to the next plateau. Yeah. Um, You know, I shot Will Smith's wedding. I was like, that's going to be it. Yeah. New New Year's Eve wedding. And then, you know, January 2nd, January 3rd, (laughs) just life gets back to normal. (laughs) Yep. And um, so I, I think there's a, there's the Hollywood Disney myth of, instant success and then you're going out to parties and everybody yeah. loves you it's uh, it, it's 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 a trap and i think um i mean I, I i have great belief in people who embrace where they are they're in their town mm. uh, do you know we are the parsons yeah 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 love them yeah i've, I've never met them but i love what they what they preach yeah. you know it's it's yeah it's i don't think I think that the rush towards luxury is a big trap. And uh, I hear people on Clubhouse kind of pinging uh, planners saying, well, you know, what do I do to yeah. really want to change my portfolio to shoot some luxury? It's like just embrace where you are and be the best in that town and uh, and grow your business really organically. And yeah. Um, you know, one of my favorite photographers ever is Mike Disfarmer. Did you ever see his book? Uh uh-uh. uh. He was uh, a, s- a small town in Tennessee or Kentucky, a portrait photographer okay. in uh, during the war, the 30s and 40s. Okay. And then he died, and somebody discovered all of his pictures. Wow. And it was, he was basically just this town photographer, but they're some of the most exquisite, honest, simple portraits. Mm. And he didn't aim for. You know, something bigger, right? So I, uh, I, I think it's. I think we all have to just pull back and and make great art where you are and at whatever level you're at, and um, don't don't worry about. You know, it's good to be ambitious, but it's also good to do your stuff. I mean, the the truth of it is, I spent four years in college only doing photography, mm. and then I spent. 10 year eight eight years in the dark room in the 80s working every day yeah i didn't make i didn't make my first dime in photography till i was 30 yeah so that's a whole different pace so by that time i had you know 12 14 years of uh seven day a week photography obsession before i i really did my first job Mm. so i think it's it's one of those things like um I have a neighbor in our loft in, in the city who's a jazz musician who played with David Bowie and played on the theme song to 30 Rock. <clears throat> that guy has practiced yeah. two hours a day for 30 years yeah. <laughs> every day. Uh, and there's something to that. Yeah, no, 100%. Yeah, I think there are two things I want to touch on. We'll go backwards. But yeah, there's... Um, We'll uh, we'll trade books, and, and this won't be a book trading show, but I feel like we'll like yeah. this. I read a so I went to college. Um, you know, I, you said you were born in Bethesda, which I love that. I live in D.C. now, um, but I was um, born in Southern Delaware, small town, single parent. Um, but I started playing guitar around ten, and 
ended up getting a full ride for a guitar, you know, to a school. And I didn't plan on college or anything like that. I, I, I didn't have that personality. You know, I was I was not um, I, it was my parents didn't go to school. I had no idea what was happening. Um, but the reality was, as I found out, was even just from age 10 to 18, you know, eight years, if I'm playing guitar every day for two years, three or three hours, four hours uh, longer, you get more experience recording all that stuff. Um, I don't think I was hitting that like 10,000 hour mark, but you know, there's something about uh, getting to the point, going back to the first thing you said, where you show up to the wedding and it's easy. And, uh, and yeah. there's this book called um, Effortless Mastery by Kenny Warner. And it's the idea of, you know, whatever you're going to be excellent in, get to that point to where it's easy and feels comfortable. And, you know, the saxophone guy or you walking into a wedding where there at some element, there's a little bit of, oh, shit, like it's Will Smith or Gwyneth Paltrow or whatever. Um, and I'm sure there are probably good days and bad days where you're like, oh, do I I have to show up? You know, I have to be yeah. the, the John Dolan they believe I am. Uh, but at the same time, say, no, nah, we've been here before, John. Like, yeah. let's roll with the cards. The the the, the house is going to deal us. And uh, let's see if we can make some magic. Um, so that's so good. I mean, that's that's literally <clears throat> that is literally what I said to myself uh, the morning of Gwyneth Paltrow's wedding. It was like, this is all I'm good at. Yeah. So just go do it yeah. because, <laughs> I mean, my wife will attest I am a terrible fixer. <laughs> uh, you know, we live in the country. I have zero country skills. But when I walk into a house on a wedding day, my spidey senses are on high alert. Yeah. I can see everything in slow motion. I can feel people's pulse. I can yeah. see when they're breathing, who's nervous and who's freaking out. And the tension between the ex-wife and the yep. ex-husband. And I can read all that. And um, and I'm in my happy place. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, it is a thing. And I think it's been robbed from people who entered photography very quickly so they almost have to re-engineer mm. and um get obsessed with I, I you know if people can get obsessed with some other project besides weddings and bring that into their weddings mm. yeah th that'd be you know just to get the hours in yeah that's what emily and i were just talking about this morning was uh the idea of you know seeing other photographers work in a good way you know not the the depressing like oh i wish i shot that or oh there's too much of this going on but the idea of seeing somebody else's work and saying I'd like to try, you know, posing a couple like that or, uh, you know, for my commerce based business, I, you know, have my own workflow, your preset or however you like to do things, but saying, oh, I'm going to download some other photographers thing and just edit on this particular project that doesn't have a, a commercial stake, if you will, low risk. Um, one, going back to the music analogy, just to make me stronger, just to make me more knowledgeable, to make me better. Uh, you know, I'm going to, you know, it's kind of like back in the day, they used to say that certain NFL players did ballet, right? And they'd always be yes, like, oh, yes, but it's hopefully yes. it helps their balance and they're living inside their body and um, all that kind of stuff. The other thing I was going to mention, um, we're talking about the chasing the, the business and chasing the art. At least what I'm finding out, I feel like over the last two years, in the the luxury big space with people like you, Sam, Emily, Pat Fury, uh, Shalice Michael, lots of different stuff, and um, is I think that people are chasing the commerce, and so they okay, I have to shoot like John, but the reality is, and this is something I'm learning, and for me, you know, other guitarists who are younger than me or something like that, and then you even to photographers my age or my skill level you see things differently than we do. And you might say, hey, you think this image is exactly the same as what I intended, but you know, this, as Emily would say, this mimic, this facial expression, or this hand, or whatever, this is what would take it from a nine to a 10, you know, or this is why I, you know, intentionally changed that. And uh, you only get that through years of experience and being willing to be critiqued, which our industry also doesn't do. And if you have a good bankroll, you know, you don't feel like you need any more education. That's a question. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think there's, <clears throat> I think there's, there's such an opportunity for somebody to, to I, I said this before, but I really think what you're talking about is develop your own style, come at weddings a whole different way, 
and find five people who want that. Yeah. And then then experiment with that. Or, um, I mean, if you keep imitating somebody else, you're going to be running and running in circles. Yeah. And you're going to feel a little funny inside. So, <laughs> um, I, I mean, I'm thrilled when I see a photographer who's doing something completely different, or I can tell who's really invested a lot and they're not just laying on a preset to make them yeah. look like you know so it, i think um i think it's it's a very tricky game to play but um but it's a thrilling ride no doubt yeah yeah tell me uh you know a little bit about the when you approach a wedding now and i think something we talked about over email before was the idea of a uh, of the imperfect, you know, and being okay with that and maybe even hunting for the imperfect versus the inspiration. Um, but practically, what does that look like on a wedding day? Or do you tell yourself, I'm going to shoot this differently? Or, you know, how do you find that balance between I, uh, what you know is going to look good versus what you're trying? Or do you, some photographers say, hey, I take the basic and then I take the wild, you know, just to, to try it? Or are you all wild? You know, what's that look like practically? Yeah, it's, it's, um, the imperfect is a, a concept uh, that allows me to not get caught up in uh, in controlling the flow. So I see the the wedding as this river raft trip. We all get on together. It starts kind of calm, and then the wedding gets going, and then you're going down the rapids, and then you know the party is kind of going over the waterfall, and all hell breaks loose. But if I uh, allow myself to um, to flow with things as they're happening, that frees me up. And it, uh, I think a lot of photographers are type A. I'm type Z or something, <laughs> you know? It's like, yeah. I just... But the reason I got there is because I, I used to take those perfect pictures, say the group pictures, yeah. where everybody's sharp, everybody's looking at me. And then I would tell the people who I was shooting that I'm all done, I put my camera down and they'd all start laughing. Yeah. And then I realized I would fake saying I'm all done and then I'd start <laughs> shooting. Yeah. And I would put those pictures next to each other. I'd put the sharp perfect picture and then the other picture next to each other and there was no doubt that the imperfect picture was truer, mm -hmm. was more honest, was more reflection of that personality, that family. Um and, and so that's that's sort of how it evolved and then I just I I just pushed it where I'm not, um, uh, it's, it's letting go of playing it safe. Mm. And a lot of people would think, you know, how could you not play it safe at a wedding? It's somebody's wedding. Yeah. It's like, you have eight hours to do it. If I'm much more stressed at a 30 minute corporate portrait of a CEO, mm. you know, those, those guys scare me, but an eight hour wedding, if you miss the bride going down the aisle, you get her coming back or, I mean, yeah. The last wedding I did in February, a small wedding in Palm Beach, the bride and groom were walking back after having, you know, the first kiss. They're walking towards me. Yeah. And I'm shooting with my Leica, but I also shoot Super 8 just for fun as sort of a gift. <laughs> so I put it on top of the Leica and I'm walking backwards with both because I couldn't decide. Yeah. I'm a Libra. I don't know which way to go. <laughs> and, you know, squirrel in the middle of the road. Yep. And, you know, uh, it's it's that's just it's at a point in my life this is their wedding i have to go for it mm, so it's that. the inverse of playing it safe yeah and yeah there's something you uh you had mentioned i think that was uh the idea of well yeah, yeah it just comes down to values is you don't want the perfect photo if it means you lose a like a emotional moment or a fleeting moment or something like that you know I, it's it's really about believability. Mm. I, I don't believe a lot of the perfect pictures. Yeah, I've been married thirty years. I'm very happily married. <laughs> Marriage is not perfect. Yeah, and uh, I think that's 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 what I was really fighting against. That there was a trend maybe ten years ago of making these absolutely sharp, perfect, beautifully lit. You know, like this is the best day ever. All these kind of things. Yeah, and I just started thinking that. You know, the industry is creating this pressure on a 28 year old bride mm. to, for this day, if one, I started seeing people freak out when one thing would go wrong because mm. they were, 
you know, imagine their wedding not getting into a blog or, mm, yeah. um, so that's really where it came from too, is that, that we as an industry, we can't put all this pressure on people to, for this to be heroic, magnificent, the bride and groom on a cliff at sunset. <laughs> That that ain't marriage. Yeah, it may be a cool picture. Yeah, but you know, if people don't realize that was three weeks before the wedding, they're saying to the photographer in Milwaukee, "Can we do this at sunset?" No. Yeah. Like no. Yeah. I mean, I do group pictures in twenty three minutes or less. Same. I mean, yeah. Uh, it's like get to the party. Yeah. It's all yours. Go. Totally. No. So it's it's a it's an ethos of it's not my wedding. It's theirs. I'm there to document things as they happen. I'm a naturally romantic, classical, you know, I make classical pictures. I don't think my pictures are, they're not wild or cutting edge. They're more timeless yeah. and, um, and, but they have to have, they have to ring true to that moment on that night. Mm. In, uh, and that's really the test. Is it, is it something that the, uh, the uncle next to me with his iPhone 12 could have shot in, or did I bring something in my authorship to that picture mm. that made it particular? So, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's, it's about pushing yourself. Yeah, no, I love that. What has been, you know, for, for people who, you know, something I'm starting to think about, right. I'm, I'm, I'm 32, been shooting for 10 years and I'm look I'm like okay what's the uh when do I need to be thinking about the exit plan and what's the exit plan or um good luck yeah yeah exactly <laughs> let me know let me know when you find yeah. it yeah so I literally um do you know Ryan Brenizer he's a New York photographer no, no? okay um <laughs> I I am I surprisingly don't know very many people I I'm, I live 120 miles north but I come in the city and yeah do my stuff and go. That's all right. Nothing wrong with that. That's the dream, right? Is, uh, you know, get to hang out in the, the country. But he, um, I had him on and we were talking about kind of, you know, longevity and, um, you know, his kind of mindset. He had some kind of like uh, medical condition where he's like, I basically have been told I have to stay in shape, you know, not even just for weddings, but it was like, I have to stay uh, in shape for this. And it, I think it's going to help for weddings. And then I had another photographer who told me, you know, I'll stop shooting when my jokes stop landing, you know? And, uh, <laughs> so what is, uh, one, what's, what are your just current thoughts about that? And then two, you know, have there been any things that have helped you personally, whether it is like a, a simple trick or rules of thumb that you've established boundaries, maybe that you keep, you know, I, I assume you're not shooting a triple wedding weekend, obviously. Uh, whereas the, the young dumb guns like myself do every once in a while. Oh man! So what's that look like for you, John? <laughs> Uh, working backwards, um, unless absolutely required, I don't shoot Sunday morning brunches. Okay. Like some of these, the weekend weddings, they want you to hang out for Sunday, but I just think nobody wants to see me Sunday morning. <laughs> I don't want to see me. <laughs> nobody looks good. Yeah. No matter how good the brunch spread is, it's like, so. Um, my, my other rule of thumb is to take this 10 minute nap before a wedding to empty myself mm. and to say what's going to happen when these two families come together so that's kind of my favorite thing it's not, it's not a real nap it's just kind of like a lay 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 flat and empty become an empty vessel yeah um i love that I, you know i don't i really don't know where this is all going um i I have something that's going to I have something that's I'm going to talk about soon okay. um that's coming out at some point right. but um uh you know I I think I I've, I've hit a point in my career that um the joy of finding these couples who who really appreciate what I do it's and, and, I mean we often become friends afterwards and yeah. Uh, we often have working relationships. I mean, the secret to my early rise was that I photographed mostly people in the magazine industry and art world right. or advertising world. Yeah. So, you know, my early clients were all photo editors, art directors, writers, editors, mm. and they were all people who loved photography. So it was never a hard sell. It was, 
it was people who didn't want a wedding photographer called me. Yeah, I love that. Because I was, a, you know, my, my, my mantra was that I'm a photographer at a wedding. I'm not a wedding photographer. Mm, I love that. I'm a wedding photographer, but, you know, <laughs> essentially, I'm just a photographer who's really fascinated by weddings, so it keeps me uh, obsessed with them every whenever I do them. Yeah, no, totally. What are kind of some of your thoughts? I think you alluded this to, to it earlier, but, you know, do you know the number of chips left in the bowl or what will be the the stopping point for you? Do you have a goal? Are there, are there any more goals? Like what's that look like for you? No, I think I'll know it, but um, I, I'm fired up for, you know, 20, 2022. I've got, I got my 10 for this year and I've got, you know, five or six for next year. Okay. And um, it's, it's, I also have a big family. So I have, Every year there's a niece or a nephew calls me and I'm like, do not do May, June, September, October. <laughs> <laughs> That's prime time. Yeah. So <laughs> call me before you plan your wedding. I love it. Um, and and those are just, you know, the most glorious weddings to shoot when it's, you know, uncle uncle photographer. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. So yeah, no uh no timeline for your, your exit plan. You're like, nope, we're we'll shoot until we don't want to do it. Well, I also you know, what else am I going to do? <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 I think it's, I mean, I do still, I, I've always had this ideal balance of 30, 30, 30, 30% um, storytelling. So either magazines or uh, other projects, 30% advertising or corporate and 30% weddings. Mm. Now I'm doing more nonprofit stuff upstate where I live, yeah. and um, but I, st- you know, I did a, a bank ad last two weeks ago, and um, That's cool. it's all kind of the same thing. It's all real people. It's all me walking in, often by myself, yeah. shooting low, um, you know, one or two cameras, and and taking on its pictures. Um, I've always had this sense that people can smell a fake picture and. Mm. You know, the younger generation is so keyed into it when somebody's selling them something. Yeah. So that authenticity thing, I've you know, I've I've, I've heard that I've watched that word be on Everything. briefs for ad world <laughs> for the last ten years. We need diversity and authenticity. Yeah. Yes, we do. <laughs> Let's do it. I love it. I love it. I love it. What and 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 it's a trick. T- I mean, I tell you what, those jobs are fun to do, but they are. A supreme high wire act because when you're shooting real people and the light's bad and yeah. you're shooting available and yeah. you know all that sort of stuff, you've got to make it beautiful but real. Yeah, I didn't even think about this, but we we might have a commonality. I I don't shoot a ton of corporate stuff, but the corporate stuff I do is there's this new wave because of the two words you mentioned, diversity and uh, authenticity. Um, big corporate clients like I've shot for Facebook and Instagram this kind of stuff and but rather than saying hey John our budget is 100k let's come to the sound stage we're gonna fake some ad photos everything will be perfect we'll shoot it we'll hire models bada bing bada boom um, we are gonna have a real live event in some random venue that our venue team non-visual professionals have chosen and uh we need you to make billboard ad level, you know, global campaign kind of stuff uh, without perfect stuff. And you're like, OK, you know, thank God for weddings. They trained me for this. <laughs> well, that uh, that is exactly the truth. Uh, weddings have always been sort of like Marine boot camp for <laughs> photographers because yeah. you have you've got to deal with a high pressure client, yep. the mother, the bride, yeah. the uh, the the chaos of the shoot. And you have to be a problem solver. I mean, it's it's created a whole generation of really strong photographers. I I, I think it's an amazing uh, there's an amazing skill set out there. My only issue is that it feels like everybody's just staying in this narrow bandwidth. Mm. And to get back to the music thing, when I see when I scroll through Instagram, it feels to me like there's a lot of soft rock going on, <laughs> and I'm looking for something just to rip it you know yeah. shred a shredding guitar or something <laughs> i love it and maybe it's not appropriate for weddings but i want to see somebody trying and yeah um i mean that at least i just want to encourage people to 
get off the soft rock <laughs> and 70s easy listening music totally no yeah. it's a yeah it's a, a weird balance right i feel like okay we have a lot of common themes right romance relationships humanity uh you know we're, we're both married right so there's a lot of commonalities there's you know probably more common than uncommon but as far as the you know the storytelling or even just for the sake of like we talked about cool pictures right i do feel like the maybe the elopement or the adventure they said well, what if we just take normal couples into cool places we're like okay okay yeah. we add a different yeah. ingredient you know that's like the uh that's like hey kale you know always been a thing but now it's popular let's put some kale and stuff but then yeah it's like what will be the next uh what's going to go further you know it, who will be the marilyn manson well <laughs> Well, or I mean, I love mixing metaphors. So <laughs> the kale thing to me is interesting because I think there's a lot of melancholy at weddings. Mm. I think there's a, a range of emotions. I think people are, there's a sense of loss at some weddings. Yeah. There's something, some skin, skin being shed. There's, uh, you know, people in transition. And, but, but photographically, so many people only show the happy moments mm. When in fact, I, I just think there's richness in that, the arc on a wedding day of stress and anxiety, and you know, there's like this massive kaleidoscope of emotions. Mm. So you know, open it up and um, bring a little, little taste. salt into the sweet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Um, that that's 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 basically what I'm preaching is, you know, um, mix it up, imperfect messy a little bit uh spicy a little bit sour you know make it a richer meal and then the pictures are more interesting a lot of the people who find me are are desperate for that they've said we've looked at 50 websites and everything looks exactly the same yeah so and then then they attach to one of my pictures and then then they they kind of get it so um i just think there's everyone's thinks that most of the bridal industry wants this one thing but there's there's it's a big industry totally yeah no i mean that's something you know even with my limited experience mentoring you know photographers and stuff like that and even what i found to be most successful for me was uh you know when i decided to be me rather than somebody else you know and just said hey like whatever it is let's keep exploring what lights adam on fire what gets me going what um you know last year I, I talked to a few couples um kind of by accident kind of on purpose about just shooting things that make me feel uncomfortable and you know trying to get in that and questioning why if something makes me feel uncomfortable in my personal life and then how do i apply that professionally and um you know i think there's definitely uh yeah there's something there and going back to what you said it's like there are people out there that want that, you know, and it, it, like we uh, like my, my joke, I, I brought him up earlier, but I'm like, if Marilyn Manson can have fans, anybody can have fans. And that, that was kind of always my <laughs> um, like, that's the recipe for a niche is like, OK, what's your niche? Um, and I think, too, you know, photographers are like, oh, you know, John has, you know, 12,000 followers on Instagram. Adam has 10,000 followers on Instagram, all this stuff. But it's like, you know, you and I, we don't need 12,000 clients. You need 10. Right. You know, right. I want. 25 or whatever and uh and that number is changing but it's like you know we really only have to connect with a, a classroom or less full of people you know or uh for you maybe a large suv um you know like it's not a it's not a crazy thing and at the same time maybe it only is that number you know that meet kind of the variables and that's what makes it so special you say all right i'm gonna give give my all i'm gonna give a hundred percent of my attention to this and uh as the kids say fully send it you know <laughs> I could tell within the first 10 minutes of a meeting whether it's a, a solid match, mm. which is c kind of fabulous. It's like, so I think that that's, that's defining your people. And then you, you kind of put it out to the universe that I want to find those people and they find you. They, I mean, it is the most word of mouth business. I've, I think I advertised, well, no, I don't think I ever advertised in the old way, mm. in the magazines, um, because each wedding would lead to another wedding. Yeah. Or you meet somebody at a party, and um, it's almost like there's a watering hole for 28-year-olds. <laughs> and if you <laughs> go down <laughs> to the watering hole and, you know, you make those connections with people, 
you will find them. They're looking for you, and you're looking for them. Yeah. So it's it's about it, it's it's really. You're doing 25 this year. Oh, do I have to worry about you? You don't. You don't want to know how many we're doing this year, John. Recovering from Dude. from last year. Uh, and again, it was, it was everybody's first uh, pandemic. So I, you know, some, I asked other photographers what they were doing, and uh, so I'll I'll lay out my strategies for people listening and watching, and uh, and for you, John. And um, but I'll set the stage. 2019, 2018, all of my heroes when I first started shot like the 35 range. So I said, okay, that's going to be, I want to try to get there as like a personal thing and let's see what happens. Um, and we did that for a few years. We're like, okay, this is a cool, sweet spot. And then you start turning the screw on pricing, you know, and try and filter to see, you know, and you get to a certain point where they, they still say yes. And you're like, okay, we got to tighten the filter. Um, good problem to have. 2020 happens, right? We had 38 on the books or something like that. We only shot. 12 the rest rescheduled to this year but we still need to book regular 2021 right right i don't right. even want to tell you i feel guilty now <laughs> i'm nervous <laughs> we uh you you, could, you got 40 we have 68 yeah it's uh Jesus. you can just text me and be like hey are you okay kid oh. um you know <laughs> it's but here's my thing this is honestly I, and it's there some people think it's a romantic I, I, I as long as i survive I'm uh, and the clients are happy. I'll be happy. And 2022, we're cutting that number to a third like, you know, um, but I do. My whole goal was I didn't know what was going to happen. And I was like, yeah. I if this is what my business has to do to, to survive, this is yeah. what we'll do, you know, and um, I always say this is a bad connotation, but I always like my internal motivation is is like, OK, if I have to go to war what would my yeah. business look like and say, all right, how do we survive this? And it's, uh, yeah. So yeah. Pray for my niece. Yeah, no, it isn't. <laughs> it's no, it's totally a year of survival. I, yeah. you know, across the board, high end, low end, everybody I know, we've all just made it through yeah. as best we can. And, um, uh, I would say early on, I did a wedding for a friend who was a management consultant and he, we sort of did a trade where he analyzed my business. I love that. And I was having, we had three kids very quickly. So with, he basically said, you know, each, each time I had a kid, he's like double your prices. I love So that. I was at $1,000 then it went to two and then four. And then I couldn't go to eight. I was terrified. So I think I went to five or something, yep. but it's like, if I'm going to be away this weekend from my kids, it's gotta be worth it. Yeah. Um, but you know, he said that thing of sh shoot twice as many. I mean, shoot the same amount and twice earn as much. twice as much. Yeah. Shoot, shoot half as many and earn the same amount. Yeah. Um, so it's you know now prices are so much higher than when I started that it is it's pretty shocking that people will pay five ten thousand bucks for a wedding yeah. at the drop of a hat. But you know, thank Martha Stewart. She she brought the industry up for everybody. Yeah. Everyone should send Martha a thank you note. <laughs> <Hey>. <laughs> Anyone who started, you know, her magazine started in 96. And before that magazine, mm. it was uh, the dark ages. Yeah. And when, it, you know, when that first magazine came in, out, it shifted the entire industry and raised everybody up. And everyone's just gone up since then. Yeah, so. no, totally. That's something I think about. I heard a stat that uh, in D.C. and like the surrounding DMV uh, pre-COVID, there were 20,000 wedding photographers kind of in the greater uh, area. And, you know, so the competition is high, right? Very similar to in New York yeah. where you're like, OK, we have to be unique and be good business people and all the things. Right. We can. I got to answer email pretty, pretty good and make sure we're connecting well not be a mean person and also good at our craft, yeah. you know, like the, the three basic ingredients and, you know, but at the same time, right. You, you said so yourself, there's 2 million weddings a year, you know, and it's like, Hey, I just need 25 of those or 30 of those. And, um, you know, so there's definitely, uh, something to that. Um, I, I want to get you out of here as soon as I can, but what is, um, I want to ask just for people who are going to be curious and they'll be pissed if I didn't ask you, just on a practical level, explain to me like I'm not a photographer. How do most of your leads come to you now? Is it truly word of mouth and you're just in that 
echelon that can afford you? Or do you have a planner that's like the planner to the stars or not to get non-romantic about it, but just help us out as far, you know, how's that work? Oh, no, it's, it, it's, it's, um, uh, I saw it last year. I, I, I've seen it the last few years. There's a lot of loyalty in the industry. Yeah. And maybe I've worked with 10 or 15 planners over the years, but each year um, there are three or four planners who call me for one or two weddings. So that gets me to six yeah. maybe. Um, and then there's some other people who find me through ref or through friends. Yeah. That gets me to eight, and then maybe one person on Instagram. Very little bit on, very little on Instagram. Yeah. Um, so it's that, it's that matchmaking thing. And I've told planners very clearly: this is my bride. Is she was an English major or an art major in college? She loves photography. Photography is at the top of her list. She doesn't want a wedding photographer. She hates being photographed. She's shy. There's usually like the the, the the one sister who loves the camera and then there's my bride <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> so it's like this one who's like the princess and i get the more understated the cinderella all, yeah, all her get, sisters yeah. wanted to be in front of the camera but exactly but cinderella exactly. was sweeping the floor baby <laughs> exactly yeah so it's it's um those are the people who really appreciate me and uh, and, and I like photographing people who are uncomfortable in front of the camera because I make it really easy for them. And, yeah. um, but so that, you know, giving people that, that kind of brief on these are my people, wedding planners will call me and say, I got one for you. Awesome. This person's so great. She's a documentary filmmaker or whatever, you know, a scientist working in Africa. Um, and it's usually someplace uh, outdoor somewhere in the country or something i'm not you know i'm, I'm terrible at lighting and um so i'm not much of a city photographer and um and and when you define who your people are then you've given that planner uh like a casting agent an mm. idea of who you, what you're good at i love that so I love that. again it gets back to the restaurant thing i'm not trying to appeal to every person and I think there's a trap that a lot of photographers fall into, which is we are pleasers. It's like, you yeah. want us to do that? You want us to get up at dawn and shoot this? Absolutely. We're going to crush it. Yeah. But from a marketing standpoint, I don't want to appeal to everybody. Yeah. So it's you're, you're, it's a very inverted kind of American business model yeah. because we want to stay small. We don't want to be chipotle or, yeah you know no. it's so it's it's i'm i'm trying to that's why i said let's turn this upside down instead of the forty thousand dollar model yeah. conversation it's like how does everybody be a small cool taco truck yeah. in austin texas yeah yeah like how do you be yeah there's got to be something to it to where you're appreciative or appreciated and you know or like that's it the, that's it the idea of having a car like I, you know, I, I always my, the metaphor that's been working in the last few few years in my brain was, OK, I've been a Honda Civic. I've been reliable. I've been great. I've been uh, everybody likes me. You know, everybody would rent me at the airport if they could and, you know, whatever. But what what does Mercedes think or what does Lamborghini think? You know, what what are the choices they're making? What does that process look like? And um I see you as the uh, Mercedes Jeep, like the Mercedes SUV, like all black, you know. Uh, John, I have to kind of. I have to. I'll send you a photo. So I have a G wagon on my desk. <laughs> yes, all blacked out. I knew it. So I, I knew uh, it. that means a lot to me. Um, I'll send you an embarrassing photo after this, but um, yeah, you know, and I think that is kind of thinking about higher value or experience based decisions. You know, where it's not a for the for the buyer. You know, right? Because they could just well, hire somebody. I, yeah, what I'm looking for is that moment when you show up on their wedding day and you walk in and they they say, oh, my God, he's here. They, this is so great. This is going to be so great yeah. that and the bride is told all their friends like this guy is not going to boss us around. He's not going to yeah. make us do dumb stuff yeah. and jump on the bed and stuff. <laughs> and Thank God. So they're already on my side. And that's when you know it's a perfect match. It's like. You're let into the inner sanctum, and you're an 
intimate observer yeah. and a very welcomed guest. So, yeah. you know, that's that's the whole thing that I'm working towards is to be that person who's, you know, really excited that they're excited to have me there. Yeah. And I'm excited to be there. Yeah. That you're a family member. And there's other yeah. benefits to that is that, you know, you can walk around with a camera and they don't look at you awkward or notice you, exactly. you know, and yeah. um, that's one of my favorite compliments or reviews was the bride was like, he took all these photos I didn't know he took, which are awesome. And I didn't even know he's there. And, and I always laugh. I'm like, I'm a 300 pound bearded guy. I'm like, <laughs> I've never been told I was stealthy, you know, by any means, so, you know, I'm very obnoxious. It's all those ballet classes, classes yeah. paid off. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Awesome. I love it. Well, John, uh, thank you so much. We'll have to have you back on. I really uh, appreciate it. I wish we had more time, but um, where's the best place? Where would you want to send people to? I'm happy to link to, you know, the imperfect article and or, you know, where can people go to chat with you and, and uh, check out some of the awesome work and see what you're doing? Uh, that's great. The, uh, yeah, my blog has the imperfect article. You have to search for it a little bit. Um, I'd say my Instagram has a pretty good flow these days. Okay. Uh, if you want to see some pictures of our sheep and uh, <laughs> and random old, I, I dip into my archive a lot this winter, and um, so I'm showing some old editorial stuff. I but uh, yeah, I don't do much. I don't do any Facebook, and that's awesome. I, that's awesome. So. Uh, but DM me anytime. Awesome. And I'd love to come back and chat again. Awesome. I love it. Thank you so much, John. And we'll, uh, you'll have to host like some kind of workshop or retreat at the farm sometime or whatever. Oh, yeah. uh, well, there's plans to that. Okay. I'll keep an ear well, on. I'm uh, actually heading down to Georgetown for a wedding tomorrow. So, oh, that's awesome. See, see in DC. I love it. I love it. Thank you so much, John. Okay, buddy. Guys, thank you so much for checking out The Bearded Hog. It really means a lot. If you can, leave a like on the video. If you want to see more videos, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications on when new videos come out immediately. Have a wonderful day, guys, and keep being awesome.